So Captain Anshuman Singh made the supreme sacrifice of his life at the Siachen Glacier. He was awarded the Kirti Chakra, the nation's second highest gallantry award in peacetime posthumously. Pictures of his mother and widow receiving the Kirti Chakra from President Draupadi Murmu went viral nationwide. Now Captain Anshuman's father has demanded a review of the next of kin policy and the award of ex gratia to the wife as next of kin. Should the compensation be equally split between parents and the widow, unless of course there are children? Is it time to review the policy in keeping with the times today? Joining me on India First is General Ved Malik, former Chief of the Army Staff. General, welcome on India First. Sir, isn't this sadly not the first time that such a case has come up? You had to deal with multiple such cases after the Kargil War in 1999. 25 years later, the problem, it seems, persists. Uh, good evening, Jain. Uh, it's rather unfortunate, yes. But then, you know, these things have been occurring even after Kargil many a time. We tried to uh, resolve some many of these problems. But uh, lately, I noticed that they have been not only uh, sensationalized, but they have also been politicized, which is rather unfortunate. Now, every soldier has to write a uh, uh, indicate next of kin. By and large, before they get married, they uh, indicate, uh, they write down the parents uh, as the next of kin. Once they get married, then all soldiers, they generally indicate uh, the spouse name because that is what the marriage means. And uh, that is what has happened uh, earlier days uh, before Kargil and so subsequently Kargil after Kargil also. Now, there has been a problem. Ex gratia uh, grant has to be given to the next of kin as per the legal orders, legal authority. And that's what, uh, it's not the army job, but it is the government of India which has made that rule. But after Kargil war, we also persuaded all soldiers to write a will and that copy of that will is kept uh, in the army headquarters also in the AG's branch just in case any soldier wants to give uh, some other share to the parents also okay and uh, we have to keep in mind that the widow is young yes and when they have the children she has to look after the children also okay and the parents by and large have lived a longer life and a fairly comfortable life even in this present case that you have indicated, okay. he's a retired JCO and he has been given his benefit when he retired uh, and he continues to get that also. So looking at both these things, it's a social problem yes. and there is not much that the army can do but except to give advice. So I want to, I want not... to come, I want to come, I'll come to that aspect in just a moment, but I want to stay on the case that parents look after a boy send him to the army or look after a soldier, send him to the army. The marriage may be six months old, it may be one year old, it may be a couple of years old. Let's say there are no issues, no children. In that case, sir, should the parents be completely cut off from ex gratia? Should they, you know, whether it's the soldier himself or the army bring in a rule that let the money be equally split between the, b between the widow and the parents, after all, they looked after the child for so long, the soldier for so long, and it's the widow who who gets the the ex gratia, and the parents are often left with nothing. Well, uh, to some extent, what you are saying is right, but let's forget. Let's not forget that the after marriage, you know, we sort of uh, take a vow of looking after each other. Yes. And uh, your wife becomes your life partner, so to say. Now, in that situation, if the next of kin has been changed to his to the wife, then according to the law, according to the government rules, an army has got nothing to do with all the ex gratia payment will have to go to the army uh, to the uh, wife to the wife whether she's been married for five months, six months, or whatever be the period. Now, that I don't think is going to be changed. And as I said, it is not the army's job to get involved in that. It is basically a legal requirement which the government of India has to look into. Okay. And, sir, 
soldiers should they also then not write a very clear you know they should they should write a very clear will they should yeah. make it clear how much money should be split keeping in mind modern day realities um, you know nothing against the young lady who's lost her husband um, and she has a very tough life to to go ahead uh, and and live but it's equally tough on the parents and often they're left with nothing so should a soldier not make it 50 50 or 60 40 or 70 30 whatever um, you know the soldier um, and or the army may deem it fit or, or the government can make such a law sir look uh, let's not i'm not getting involved in the government law but all of the property it is you're right the soldier should have a very clear will and he can do that all other properties other than the ex-gratia payment today ex gratia payment as per law has to go to the wife the all of the property that he has acquired uh and is getting from the army also directly that uh, it depends on the will if he says that half my dsop should go to the uh my uh, parents well it will go accordingly so that part that's not uh, that's not in under dispute at all one more thing I want to indicate. Sir? You know, we had this problem during Kargil War. Yes. And I had written to all state governments. Now, and I persuaded them to give a share of compensation that they were giving and uh, to the parents also, which is what they are giving. I know of a uh, case of Haryana. Haryana gives 70% uh, to the wife and children and 30% to the parents. Oh, oh. That's the point I was coming to. Absolutely. So Haryana, like you very clearly said and uh, you know rightly said, sir, thirty-five percent goes to the the wife or the widow, thirty-five percent for children, fifteen percent each for mother and father. Should the central government should the central government not do the same? Change keeping in times with the modern day realities. Don't don't leave out the parents. Don't leave out the wife. Don't leave out the children. Look, uh, there are cases. I mean, in this case, she's a very young lady and she's got the whole life in front of her. Yes, sir. Actually, there would be cases, let's say, at the uh, level of the JCOs, when the uh, wife has to look after the children also. They have to be brought up. You know, there is another case of Panipat where uh, this lady has got two years old child. Yes. She has to look after the child also. So, you know, it's very difficult to make, in any case, the army, I feel, should not get involved in the dispute. It is very unfortunate. Army can give advice to both people to sort out their problems. But I am quite certain that the army should not get involved in the legal part of it. And as far as the recommendations is concerned, let the government of India, if it wants to change the law, let them uh, proceed with it. But I don't think it would be proper for us to uh, not give compensation, or adequate compensation to the next of kin, in this case, the wife. I will let that be the last word on this part of the show. You've dealt with this issue very closely during the Kargil War. Um, and I saw you uh, in many instances, sir, uh, be as fair as possible uh, to parents, to the widows, to the children. And, and I hope uh, the government comes up with a policy that all can, can perhaps come together and address this issue, this very, very painful issue, as effectively as possible. General Malik, but for joining me here. Go on, go, on, go on, sir. You're making a point, sir. I feel that we should not take sides. It's not fair without knowing the details, circumstances under which this problem has occurred. And having said that, I would also request that let's not sensationalize this or politicize this. That would be unfair to the whole family, both the next of kin as well as the parents. Oh, absolutely, sir. Very, very clear about it. We've tried to deal with it as sensitively as possible. For joining me here on this India Today special on this part, Jal Malik, many thanks. Thank you.